Davy de Vrij. En... I'm uh, Jeroen Uitendalen. Uh, we're developing here uh, our project Ground. Um, we're drawing uh, graphite interfaces uh, on the paper. And then we're built instruments and uh, yeah, we're developing it now. Yes. And um, can you tell me um, what's happening here? Well, uh, basically, uh, how the instrument works is that we use uh, graphite as a conductor. Let's say graphite is a conductor for electricity. And what we do is that we um, use very simple synth uh, chips, let's say ICs, and we sort of um, replace the graphite, uh, we replace the pot meter by the graphite. So uh, we basically draw uh, circuits. And uh, with uh, these circuits, we, we play music, let's say. So it's, it's actually like an audiovisual instrument. Actually, we developed the graphite interface uh, already three years ago, um, but we, we 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 played a few times together, and then we didn't do anything with it for a, a period, and then we decided to uh, to get together again because it's such a nice concept, and uh, because it's like an instrument uh, which basically makes itself because it, once you we had the idea, we had so many ideas of po there were so many possibilities we could use. It would be uh, a big shame not to uh, not not to utilize those things. So uh, yeah, so we thought uh, let's go to Stime and let's uh, let's uh, get busy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we start with very simple shapes. Uh, we start with the dots and then the lines, and then also the drawing um, uh, comes out of the playing. We play, and then the drawing, drawing comes out of that. So um, yeah, actually, it's very geometrical shapes. The other things we have to say, though. <laughs> is this your first time being interviewed about the project? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, usually, Tucker does the questions. Okay, but well, there's one one more thing. Yeah, Maybe I can I can uh, say about the drawings. Um, uh, the fact is, um, let's say that um, the nice thing about this instrument is that. Um, the shape you're using, the drawing you're using, sort of determines also uh, the performance. So um, if you see a drawing, you can see lines, and you can see circles, and you can see gradients. And uh, let's say if I would, if we would use a circle, then uh, we would have um, a different kind of um, sound or a different kind of um, development in the in the performance than if we would use uh, only lines or grids, because a circle has a certain uh, yeah. movement in itself. If you would, if you take two points and you put them on the circle and you move one point like this, you really have like a like a, a specific rhythmical uh, development. So uh, the nice thing about this is that you can really um, draw your own instruments on the on the plane. Let's say. No, we actually the first residency is like we did all the electronics, and the second residency, we're just really investigating uh, what drawings we can use, and um, how does it shape the performance, so let's say. Yeah, you can see them as performances. They're really like like tests, like you say, like we're really investigating like what happens if we have a circle and what can we do with the circle. Uh, what happens if we make uh, spiral shapes or something, or um, yeah? And these, what um, is it? Copper that's reading. It's uh, like this point. Yeah. Well, yeah. So that's also something we developed. Is that um, we need two points to get on to put on the graphite, you know, 
Um, oh, let's say they're color coded. They're color coded, yeah. Uh -huh. So each color represents an instrument. Mm -hmm. Oh, each color each color represents an instrument. Let's say so. Uh, this is one instrument, and um, basically, um, it's very handy for us to have colors because um, if you have a lot of instruments on one drawing, you don't know what which is what. So it's very important for us to know what is going on, let's say. And uh, we we thought about these colors, so uh, we have more an overview. And uh, these blocks, they have magnets on it. So, so this is copper. And uh, under the paper is, is uh, in metal. So it really sticks to the to the paper, let's say. Uh, now we decided uh, which kind of shapes we're gonna use. Yeah. So now we play with those uh, with the selection, and um, yeah, we play both on each paper on another paper. Um, Do you think it's gonna change much by the time you play it to the factory? The different factories. Uh, yeah, we start with these shapes, but uh, during the performance we also draw and erase. So every time it's different. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's also that we're only using four instruments now, but we still have uh, six instruments we're not using. So probably uh, with the performance, it's time, which is in three, four months. I can imagine that we are getting better and better in it. So we will probably have more uh, instruments on the field or on the on the drawing. So it will be really like um, the nice thing really about this residency is that we have a whole arsenal of different instruments, which we can choose off also in a performance, so it gives much more variation, much more richness to the whole uh, performance, let's say. So it, it probably will be, yeah, much uh, richer, uh, I guess, September. And what's going on in here? Uh, this? Yeah. Uh, these are actually the instruments itself. So uh, we uh, I can open one up, maybe. Yeah, actually. Is it boards? It's circuit boards, yeah. It's ICs. And so. that's what you guys made the first residency? Exactly. Mm. Yeah. That's a smart way. That's a smart residency. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> 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 yeah. The first the part of the residency was the technical part. The second part is the play part. So the second part is that we're just trying out the instrument and playing with it. And when are you guys back for the third part? There is okay. no third part. No. Well, hopefully more performances. Uh. Cool. Was it really clear what we said about how it, what the instrument was? Yeah, I, I think so. I think so. Yeah. Uh, was it clear that it was graphite and it's a variable resistor? Yeah. Okay, so um, basically the graphite instrument works uh, that we are using graphite as a variable resistor. Um, uh, we uh, replace uh, pot meters of uh, uh, handmade uh, synthesizers like very simple very basic uh, chips um, and we replace it by the graphite so that means that we um, use drawings to control the sounds to control the performance Hi, I'm Lindsay Houston, and uh, this is the Sleeping Bears project that I'm making together with Yoko Siyama. Uh, she's, we, we have a company called Sentient Architecture, and we've been making installations with elastic bands, and this time we're using a kind of elastic rubber. Um, the piece is about a space I can just show you here. It's a, it's a kind of hill, uh, and, and inside there are these uh, bunker spaces. It's an old waterline fort in Utrecht. 
And when we saw this, we kind of had the idea. It's, it's an exhibition called CARP um, for young people from age 7 to 12. And when we saw this space, we thought of a sleeping animal and the inside could be a kind of nervous system. And that's what these strings are going to be. Um, there will be two resonating columns which have um, content mics attached. So there'll be kind of two halves of the space playing against each other. And then uh, 16 strings with accelerometers attached. So there's a kind of composition made from the movement of the strings and also the accumulated resonation of um, reverberation of the strings. And uh, yeah, it's a kind of ongoing sound installation and playful space. Where yeah. Can we when? When and where? Monday, the 16th. <laughs> and it's in uh, Utrecht in Fort Rauchenhoek. And it's, um, it's just outside of, of Utrecht. It's a kind of uh, island space. Yeah, they only open it for this festival and they have another theatre festival. Yeah, so the actual exhibition opens at the 29th of May and it closes on the 6th, no, no, 10th of July. Yeah. So you're going to have two of these? Yeah, two of these, and the space is about 20 metres long and 5 metres wide with a curved ceiling, and there'll be 12 speakers around the space, quite, quite low. Um, yeah, so it's a kind of immersive, tactile, physical installation. And there will be, a, in a way, I, th I think, you know, we'll try to compose the sounds as much as possible, so it's not going to be completely chaotic. There will be some kind of logic to it. But there'll also be, hopefully within that logic, there'll be a kind of game or, you know, especially with the two halves, we try to connect them so that um, people can play together, something like this. But a lot of the work is also going to be done in the space because, yeah, dealing on scale, I mean, this thing is going to be twice as long at least. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Awesome. Yes. Oh, well, I'm here from on the video. Really? Yeah. Everybody knows I hate it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, what are they? Oh, oh. You're fine. I'm going to be so. You know, you need to have one. I'm not in the department. I'm just here. 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 Je mag vragen stellen wat je wilt, ze wil je wilt. Uh, je, je vindt je nu in de foyer van zeg maar, de, de kant waarin we op concerten organiseren, waar twee in dan. Deze en <coughs> de gins aan de achtergrond. Daar zit meer het kantoor, zeg maar. daar gaan we zo meteen ook nog even naartoe. Dus hebben we speak Dutch, by the way? Of understand Dutch? Oké, okay, dat is mooi. <coughs> maar als concerten organiseren, dan is dit de foyer, dan is dat de bar. Bij als je wilt, kun je nu nog een drankje kopen voor het uh, rondgelopen. Uh, en hiernaast is de zaal. Dus daar gaan we zo meteen naar ons eerste uh, naartoe. Maar misschien even eerst in het kort over wat Stijn is. Stijn is eigenlijk twee dingen. Het is, uh, uh, het is een lab. Wij onderzoeken zelf uh, een hele interesse op het gebied van technologie en muziek. Hoe je met nieuwe technieken muzikaal dingen kunt doen. Uh, daar hebben we zelf een aantal dingen in ontwikkeld. We hebben er zelf software die je kunt bij ons kunt kopen. Uh, we hebben er zelf mensen die doen, die doen daar onderzoek naar. En uh, daarnaast, en dat heeft er heel erg mee te maken, werken we juist heel veel met mensen die naar ons toekomen die ook zelf iets willen. En dus we hebben, wel, we hebben wel onze eigen onderzoeksagenda. Uh, die gaat momenteel erg over het, 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 het kijken of we instrumenten kunnen maken waarmee je weer met iemand samples kunt spelen. Veel meer dan het geluid, maar goed, dat is zeg maar, ons eigen ding. Uh, uh, tot mensen die soms wel twee, drie maanden hier zitten als een soort, wat je dat noemt, artist in residence. Uh, ze zeggen wel eens dat ze net zoveel leren van de andere mensen in het guesthouse dan van ons hier. 
En dus we, we, we zijn heel vaak gasten hier voor mensen die komen werken. En we hebben een heel grote workshop programma. Dus op allerlei soorten cursussen, soms van een dag of een paar dagen. Wat we heel veel doen voor iemand die een soort eerste keer met ons iets wil doen. Daar zeggen we tegen haar, kom dan naar de orientation workshop, zoals die heet. Dus dat is een soort programma van een, van een dag of vier. Waarbij je eigenlijk gewoon een beetje al stappen loopt van wat, wat we normaal doen met mensen. En dan eh, aan het einde daarvan weet bijna iedereen wel wat hij, wat hij, wat hij, ongeveer wat hij wil. En weten wij ook wel in hoeverre we dat kunnen ondersteunen. Dit is gewoon een video uh, van, van alle verschillende projecten. Dus dat komt uit ook uh, compilatie. Uh, dat is So the idea in, in the project is to um, allow the software and the control of the software to sort of change 
based on how you use it. Uh, it's a little funny to describe. I can demonstrate it to you. For example, uh, I find myself in concert almost all the time, getting very busy uh, with my hands. spot where I want to have some kind of expressive control over the volume, for example. And right now, my volume is mapped to this thing, and I'm reaching down and pointing into my mouth. Uh, and the, the easiest solution to doing that is to swap the control of the volume out to something else, or to swap out something that my hand is busy with for something else. So I can change the mode of this keyboard, and some of the other elements in this to uh, play a sound, for example, like this. And then I can put it in another, I can, I can make it available to be picked up from another controller. I've done this. So now this hand is free. So when I'm trapped playing my instrument, for example, and I, I need to control the ball, free up the hand. different than just doing whoop, just doing this. I can have the start and the stop of the voice, but not uh, a fine control over the enveloping of the instrument. That's a simple example of the idea of the modality that we're trying to achieve uh, with the software. Simply put. Uh, and I'm not joking. If anyone wants to play this, I'll <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> what what brings you to Stein? Uh, Stein was a, a, a great location for us to get together and have the opportunity. Uh, I mean, we're we're from a variety of countries. It's uh, it's central, and um, well. Everybody at Stein is also very concerned with the similar things. And it's a great opportunity to you know, get the synergy between uh, what's going on here and, uh, and what we create. Uh, ah, so there's uh, you've got a few voices that can start a sound. Yeah. All the sounds that are being created here are controlled here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah. I 
just what happens. But I can also change it on the fly yeah. um, to do something else. We just came up with this like uh, only moments before you guys came in. More or less. <laughs> she had the system, and I and she she had the system which I knew about, uh, which is very interesting for doing this, this wireless sensing. And I we were all joking about well they joke about my setup. And uh, <laughs> everybody says, well, this is just a big knob, you know, or just a, a big joystick. And it's true, but I've never put any sensors on there. But... Here's the first group. Hi. Hi, everyone. This is Jessica Aslan. Good to meet you all. Yeah, um, just talk a bit about my project, really. I'm here for the design of. Um, digital interfaces to facilitate music workshops. By trade, I run music workshops for people with disabilities. So this can range from large groups to small groups. But I also work as an electroacoustic composer. So my drive towards this is to bring the digital into the workshop environment and really facilitate people's making of music with uh, accessible instruments. So I've done a bit of just hacking with the Wii remote, for instance. How long have you been this time? I've been at Stein, I did the orientation workshop, and now I've been researching for about a day. So it's a very early day <laughs> project. So yeah, I'm basically looking into ways in which you can engage people in sound. So I've got the Wii Remote, for instance, and uh, I programmed it in a bit okay. to trigger simple sounds that you, that you know that you're triggering and that someone can pick up and just, with a flick of a wrist, trigger something, and then... slight movement you see you can hear and to keep the sound alive you see you have to keep moving your wrist so it's sort of an element of trying to engage people in sound and not keeping it static but at the same time having it very accessible for movement so I've programmed in a composition that might be useful for a workshop environment for two to three people where you basically introduce people to sounds and then together you arrange them in a certain way and it's programmed in with sort of a gestural score which someone can then perform with a very easy interface and so this is able to engage people in performing their own work so I'll demonstrate this for you. But when you say you, this is for people with disabilities? Yeah. Like, so like physical disability? Not necessarily. Or? Okay. I, I'm thinking in terms the workshop that I w was considering this in is moderate learning disability. So this is people that perhaps, yeah, have, have movement but n can't necessarily play a guitar or things like that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. this is a really useful yeah. thing to trigger that sound. So. Sideways motion moves the sound from left to right. You hear that? You move it up. Speed 
figure out the sound. So now we're it down. We sort of scrub through. basically shows you how all I was literally doing was moving. <laughs> so all I was literally doing was moving around and you can sort of get a feel from it, not necessarily through an interface of the screen, but through the sound. And yeah, essentially it, it's quite a powerful instrument to have. And the beauty of computers is you can have such an extreme sonic palette with a small thing just as this. So yeah, that's and I was pushing, pushing the button. Okay, so my name is June, like who's working in this place, which is Stein Hardware Lab. And I've been working here for three years and uh, we build instrument here and we also research about the project that uh, the artists or musicians or composers need. And we discuss about things here and mainly we build something here yeah that can you explain the station okay so here is like where i normally sit and program the farmers or whatever or check my emails and th this is my like a seat and these are the books that i normally need for the researches and stuff and so we go over here this is kind of like a, how do you call it cart <laughs> tools of cart that it also has some like shelves like uh, that you can put stuff in or so which i really like and you can also like, move around and this is kind of like a desk that i kind of make something or build something or grind something I mainly work over there when I need to do some physical stuff. And there's one, yeah, 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 okay. And then uh, here's the, actually I recently got this and this is an oven. And uh, it, uh, not the lunch, but like uh, I, I cook the circuits in there. So which saves a lot of time for for my for, for my work i mean like if i need to make like lots of like circuits and then like if it's smd components then like uh, cooking should be like uh, very essential i mean the, the, the you populate the components on top of the circuit and then you like uh, cook it 
then it saves time. Yeah, okay. Hi. That's June, our brilliant uh, Uber engineer. And this is his domain. Yeah. Can you tell a bit about what you do, too? Okay, nice to see you. My name is June, and welcome to Time Hardware Lab. So, this is mainly the place where we build something. So, if the artist wants want something, or the main it should be like a, some kind of instrument, like a musical instrument or whatever, uh, then uh, the, the, the next door is the software and, and this is physically you build something based on their needs. So what you see now is uh, this is my desk and this is our artist di director, the Taku's desk. And so this is kind of the, the tools and I physically make something here and this is kind of oven so you populate the, the parts and then like you cook it in the oven it saves a lot of time when the when the circuits are many then you just populate and then like you assemble the components and cook it and this is kind of like the, the desk that i solder something or may not them these components and other than that yeah, these are the kind of like uh, junks from the old projects and the behind yourself, like there are kind of two other tools and like wires and really old like uh, frequency generator or other tools and around around from 40 years ago or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's really old tools. Yeah. It's your muse museum part. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> kind of, I kind of like... Can you measure distortion of the instruments? Well, I mean, before they, they made uh, the, the, the synthesizers and stuff, mm -hmm. and and then like uh, they used that thing. I, I the, the engineer actually who built that thing like visited here, and then he saw it, and he was really happy. Okay. And, and then like uh, he was telling me that like uh, he made measured the, the the distortion of the harmonics for this like uh, while they were building kind of old style synthesizers mm -hmm. but now we don't use it anymore actually yeah. Yeah. can you can you do you have a ball here that we can, uh, can show? yeah otherwise I, a composer came to us and he said he wanted to write a composition for uh, jugglers yeah. and uh so like uh, so what? Like, so it, these are all different. Anybody who can juggle? Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. 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 I'll give this so one. I did. Oh, okay. Okay. So I'll I'll I'll. I'll is that three or two? Two. I'll, I'll prepare for like a three balls because they are not really like. Uh, actually, I was testing them, so sounds are kind of like. Uh, I didn't really test, like this one now. One minute, please. Yeah, it's probably time. Pretty much everything you need is in the ball. There's a there's a speaker, and an amplifier, and a battery, and this 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 chip here is actually a synthesizer. Yeah. You can do speech synthesis as well as you know musical sounds. And there's even a wireless uh, communication that um, as somebody is juggling the ball, somebody else can control the sound that they make. So the the, the chip can have a number of presets. And with an external device, you can actually control the presets that are in the balls that are being thrown. So this is what you just made. Like. Yeah, we we developed these these are. Yeah. 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 It's okay. It's okay. Cool. But uh, yeah. So, but in this way, like you, the, you hear the sound when, when you catch. But when ah, how cool! Uh, <laughs> with, with this is so much fun. Yeah. With, with the proper con controller, so you can also change the sound in the in the on the fly. Yeah. So uh, the rhythm is so beautiful. Yeah. 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 Um, Oh, 
Yes, I, I think I will. And I also like uh, spend a lot of time to organize this space and the way that I like and also that I feel like uh, comfortable actually. So in this space, actually, this is the space that I feel really comfortable in Amsterdam, like uh, the, the workspace. And so all the things that like uh, I collected, I, I like uh, hardly throw away anything, and also try to like collect all the stuff that like uh, artists or other people just comes in, and then the junks that they like, they can just pick pick them up, or they can just even the boxes. I mean, like uh, old carton boxes and stuff, the papers or whatever. And so it's kind of like, uh, yeah, the, there are collections of my, like, uh, yeah, past three years. Yeah. So I, I'm going to miss here. Yeah. No, the, the lab is so much better if you speak to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Garbage. <laughs> Not garbage, but yeah, I also agree that uh, before it was kind of like, uh, but maybe that that was more kind of like a time spirit or I don't know like a, because time is like 40 years old and like a, there were like 40 years old stuffs like a, were messed in this space before so but maybe like a, it was it was okay but like I prefer a bit organized than 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 that I mean like. A, so that you can see see what is what and 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 see also the the, the timeline. I mean, like uh, I also organized a bit in this space, so that like all the tools are like more towards there, and also some of the works from the old engineers are kind of like uh, kind of organized over there. So so next people, or I mean like engineers or interns who are gonna work here. I hope they kind of like uh, keep this space as not. I mean, like everybody has their own way, but like I hope they can. Uh, I don't know, like uh, like uh, love this space. I mean, like uh, the the space that you work in, uh, treat the space as a more like like your room. I mean, like uh, so. You don't really like mess around with with your room or living space, so yeah. I hope yeah yeah you're welcome yeah you're thanks. Welcome. Yeah. Thanks. Hi, I'm Daniel Schoner. Uh, we are here in the Sound Bunker, which is an experimental sound space which combines uh, past and present in terms of instrumental research as time. Present in as much as what you see on the table here is part of the Mobile Touch exhibition, which is developed by uh, a colleague of mine, Frank Balde, uh, initially together with Michelle Weisfisch. What you see at the back are vintage synthesizers uh, there's a Patni VSC3 at the back. There is a Korg 100M system here, a Roland 100M system here. There's a PPG. Uh, and my colleague Nico Bess at the very back plays uh, a crackle uh, box of sorts. 
this is a very special place for me because it brings back uh, some of the inspiration of my colleagues that have been at Stein before me. I've been at Stein for about 13 years, so I've been here for quite a while, but uh, the generation before me inspired me a lot, and they were inspired by some of these equipment which they put their hands into, like Michel with the VCS3, uh, Joel Ryan, who has his first ever uh, sequencing box just down there, uh, other people that uh, like Nico also, uh, that have developed uh, new instruments out of what they found in the past. So this is a place where some of the things that we can imagine happens and some of the things that we just want to play with uh, could arise. It's been running for about, it's taken about three weeks to really make it and it's taken uh, almost a year to establish it. Well, the, plan, uh, the plans may be manifold. Uh, we have a very diverse uh, uh, artistic group of people that come here. Uh, so one obvious aspect will be that we do some workshops down here. So we will have uh, different people that are really very knowledgeable about the analog world uh, rediscover what some of that electronic has meant for, uh, for an earlier generation. Uh, my own uh, idea about this space is that it is a meeting place for different uh, different aesthetic groups. And maybe the other plan which I would really very much hope for, look for, is uh, to find a way of uh, bringing the digital and the analog together. So we might, we might make a little installation, like uh, a little, it's an empty space there, a little pater nostra where some of the sounds get taken into the real space of, uh, uh, like for instance, uh, a sound, uh, an internet radio. We'll see. So it's an open plan. Maar de bedoeling is, je zit daar neer, je probeert iets en soms is het heel intuïtief. Je bent echt verbaasd.
I'm Esther uh, Rochard and I work at STEIM and uh, STEIM is short for Foundation of Electronic Instrumental Music and tonight we have an um, open studio night which means that the people can come in and have a tour through all the studios and the sound bunker we have set up since, since recently downstairs and people get an idea of, of what is uh, happening here in STEIM because sometimes it's like a big big mystery like for me sometimes it's a mystery also and uh, it's very uh, how you say that um, electronic and, and sometimes nerdy I don't always get what it is but the end result is always nice so um, STEIM helps with uh, developing ideas for artists sound artists video or visual artists and they come up with ideas but they don't know how to uh, develop something and then time is, is the place to go uh, to get advice and and um, get help developing and, and making your your new instrument for instance so that's what happening what hap happens here at time and I'm the one uh, that is sort of the manager van alles, as we call it in Holland. I'm the jack of all trades, uh, is that correct? Yeah. And um, so I do office work, I do administration, and I help organizing events. And uh, also, like an evening like this, I, I set it up. And um, so tonight you can have a look in three studios where residents are working. Uh, you can have a look in the in the basement in the sound bunker where Daniel, a colleague of mine, he has set up some vintage um, uh, vintage electronic mu uh, instruments and also there's a sort of a mini uh, mobile touch exhibition. The mobile touch exhibition is like a moving exhibition. We, we go all over all of the world with it, with sort of funny sound making um, devices instruments you cannot even call it instruments it's, a, it's like there, there's a mirror and you, when you look in it and you move it makes sounds and uh, that kind of funny stuff going on so that's also one of the uh, places where you go during the tour during the tour and then you go upstairs in the hardware lab where june wor works another colleague of mine and that's where we do